What's up, everyone? Today, we're going to be talking about OpenAI's Sora. It is an AI video generator. I, of course, have reservations in terms of creativity and art. So let's dig in. Let's show you guys what's up. Sora is an AI model that can create realistic and imaginative scenes from text instructions. So what that means is you can put in a text-based prompt into Sora and it will respond with a video. These are just some of the visuals that they've shared so far. A stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street <coughs> filled with warm glowing neon and animated city signage. She wears a black leather jacket, a long red dress and black boots. Right now, these prompts or videos that are produced are only 60 seconds. They can't do more than 60 seconds. So this is, this does feel insane. To an everyday person to look at, to see something so crisp and then realize that this is all generated is mind boggling. Down to the reflections in the sunglasses, the depth of field, uh, this prompt, a movie trailer featuring the adventures of a 30-year-old spaceman wearing a wool-knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky, salt desert, cinematic style, shot in 35 millimeter film. Let's see, shot on 35 Mm, see the problem is it already doesn't look like film to me but okay it's too f it's too it's too clean it's too digitized is it impressive absolutely the fact that it produces is absolutely impressive. This is drone view of waves crashing against the rugged cliffs along Big Sur's Gray Point Beach. The crashing blue waters create white tipped waves with the golden light of the setting sun. While the golden light of the setting sun illuminates the rocky shore. I have to say, I am born and raised in California. I have an affinity for the northern coast. I, I really love these cliffs and just the visuals this lighting i know this lighting you know the same way you know your city or places around you that are part of you because you grew up next to them i know this lighting <laughs> this is crazy this is unreal this is pretty cool this is beautiful the detail just look at these freaking puppies look at these puppies they clearly chose visuals with, I mean, complete mass appeal that emotionally target us. Like cute puppies, animals, cozy situations, a grandmother's birthday. There's another one. He, Nick St. Pierre on Twitter, he said he ran all the Sora prompts through Mid Journey. And it's interesting to see how some, how similar some are. Side by side shots. This is, this is interesting right two different programs it's almost as if they shared databases for their training yeah exactly this one is another image that went pretty viral a uh, video that went pretty viral so insane amounts of similarities down to even what uh, you know the color of the dress let's see i wonder if that one included the color of the dress a grandmother with neatly combed gray hair stands behind a colorful birthday cake with candle yeah i mean nowhere in that prompt is the color of her outfit you know but look at just how similar they are in color and it's like sleeve length all of it so the amount of money being poured into ai and not just ai generative video but ai technology is absolutely insane let me show you this they're saying we break down the generative ai landscape across funding trends top valued startups most active vcs and more look at from 2019 there was 1.2 billion invested into ai into generative ai by 2023 there was 14.1 billion absolutely mind-numbing man in 2023, investment in generative AI startups surged with equity funding reaching an impressive 14.1 billion across 86 deals. 14.1 billion across 86 deals. 86 is not that much, and but 14.1 billion is a lot of money. <laughs> 
OpenAI, uh, which is who we're discussing, uh, secured $10 billion in one round. So that's one round of financing. They're going to continue financing. Inflection, which is another company focused on human computer interfaces, they raised $1.3 billion in Series B. Anthropic, an AI model developer and research outfit, garnered $850 million across the Series C. Adept secured $350 million in a Series B. Cohere, known for AI models and text generation, raised $270 million. Insane. And even though there are huge rounds of investments, over $100 million, it's still in an embryonic stage, like AI as an industry. But imagine, it's in its infancy, and it's already raised $14.1 billion. Imagine we invested that into, I don't know, healthcare. <laughs> Education. Would be nice, right? All right, so let's get into like some of my personal feelings, maybe some of your personal feelings with a lot of generative content that we're seeing. Of course, the big thing about this is like, we have to question how much of this exists and is possible because of stolen content in the first place. And that is definitely a big one. And we just saw examples of that with comparing video and photo responses based on the same prompts with completely different companies because they're all probably sharing, if not the same, almost the same machine learning technology, right? This video is not sponsored, but I do want to give a shout out to my Patreon community. And if you're interested in joining my Patreon, check out the link below. Really appreciate it. Obviously, uh, a lot of critics when it comes to AI tech are concerned about things like antitrust issues, uh, monopolizations, national security is a big one. There's no way America is gonna go backwards with this. They, ha they must move forward or they're left potentially in the dark and leaving themselves vulnerable, really. Issues like incentives and in, in, in the lack of innovation, um, different companies will be incentivized to prioritize different things. Are they gonna pri prioritize profit? Are they gonna prioritize actual breakthroughs to just then get bought out by one of these massive companies that are only profit driven? Uh, there's just so many things that are concerning and also unknown. I also really struggle to see here how these examples can actually be a breakthrough for humanity, really. But most companies are not humanity driven. Another big concern is just like the trend of tech companies acquiring different startups, like I said. So maybe there's a startup that started out with good intentions, but then later out, they just got, get bought out by another company. Um, so just a concentration, a monopoly of owning these different companies is a huge concern. Even if Sora has competitors, look at the names. They're owned mostly by familiar major corporations. Collusion is another big concern. Like how it can, how these machine learning technologies and their AI powered pricing algorithms can actually be adopted by these very large but few companies to share data and lead to anti-competitive practices. Again, I mean, just look at the visuals that we just compared. They look very similar from different companies doing similar things. And of course, the big one is just as a side effect, as a result of all of this, inflation can happen. Going back to harming the majority of humanity. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty big concern, right? Another one, of course, deep fakes, misinformation. And then of course, to me, and for me personally, creativity is a big one. It's very worrisome um, just because if you think about it like this, a concentration of ownership by a few major companies can stifle innovation, right? I think it will stifle original creative thought because I think as it stands, this type of technology definitely benefits a small minority of very large companies and not of people. So I'm really skeptical of technology really bringing added value to art. You can sort of argue that it will give independent artists and creators ex access to things that maybe they didn't have access to before. I mean, you see people like Grimes and Mr. Beast chiming in, in in a serious tone and also like a funny tone. But again, I don't think that these tools will benefit 
independent artists or independent creators in the same way that they will benefit companies and people that can actually afford to hire artists and performers and creators to work on their massive creations because they have the budget so yeah i I definitely think it's it's beneficial more so at this stage to those at the top of the food chain than it is to the average human even if it's stuff that looks cool and is very impressive or to your independent artists or creators musicians you know like i also just think about the state of photography cinematography special effects cgi and like where this and can this leave room for creative innovation because it's really difficult for me to imagine that future as it stands right now ai turning to whether ar can make you cry because you're moved i mean i already touched on that a lot of the promotional materials we're seeing about this use very use things with that have mass appeal to strike you emotionally right it's emotionally manipulative the the of course it is (laughs) they're running a business uh but even if you just think about like why this why this isn't exciting to me as a creative person if you even think about like 15 20 years ago comparing what you saw on network tv even a silly show like the oc it looked good (laughs) even if you didn't like the content it looked beautiful right now you compare that to things like reality tv social media it's overexposed it feels flat it's often oversaturated no texture there's no textures give you feelings right so it's just like reality tv social media with filters and so it's really easy to blame these things on like the consumers and what what the people like and what they want to see i do agree that people like to see train wrecks right so that's why they consume those things but i also wonder if it's the consumer that actually changed or if it's because studios producers found that they could spend much less make more while shilling out like trash quality and removing artistry from the medium because that's what i've seen so they love to blame it on the viewers but i think they just found a way to make more lower the quality and reduce their budgets and make more money and here's the proof it shows like euphoria this new season of true detective movies like oppenheimer society of the snow really show you that audiences still appreciate the artistry of cinematography and i'm not saying these shows or movies don't use technology whatsoever but there is a true artistry you feel there is a human touch you feel there is a human component and there is a skill there's a skill set that is needed to produce these visuals so i don't think we can blame the audiences i also don't want cinematography to die but like oh, just it's so frustrating <sighs> there are there are a lot of issues that i have especially when it comes to creativity because i you know while it may might make things cheaper does it does it mean they're innovative and creative i'm not convinced yet is it cool is it amazing what they can do sure exactly it feels soulless you don't feel the human touch so obviously this this is very new to us but machine learning technology has been around for a while and i think it's only going to develop at a faster pace than it already has but i encourage you guys to remain skeptical to keep yourselves informed and also let's try to think about something a little bit positive i would really like to see machine learning technology and ai technology do things for the betterment of humanity. I I think I'm very interested in what it can do for science and even possibly what can it do to bring more financial literacy to the average person because we really still live in a world where there are there are so many things available to us but most of us aren't taught these things growing up we're not taught these things in school so when it comes to science and things like financial literacy i'm excited to see what happens with ai i haven't seen a whole lot um yet except for like anecdotal medicinal information yeah like making new medicines or people being able to diagnose themselves but please be careful if you attempt that don't don't worry yourself don't go down that rabbit hole too much but i am at least attempting to look at this in a positive light of what can it bring us because really from a creative point of view the video stuff doesn't excite me that much what does excite me is its potential in science and hopefully education no one in power is interested in teaching illiterates to control their finances that's how they make their money i agree oh i agree that i mean the system is designed that way but maybe there will be somebody that changes that 
a, a little healthy anarchy. <laughs> We, when we first started seeing things like da, Dale, Dali, however you want to pronounce it, pop up. I was super into this like wacky cursed imagery. So much so that I'm going to share with you guys some stuff that the mods trolled and spammed me with in our, in our chats. All right. So things like this, you know, trolling me, Sasha Gray eating mayonnaise because they know I hate mayonnaise. Like these cursed images, super creepy. Sasha, emo Sasha Gray. <laughs> Because I still don't understand emo. <laughs> Courtroom sketch of Sasha Gray versus Elmo. I mean, this stuff is so weird. It's so meme-y. Uh, this stuff was fun. When we're leaving it at this, it's, it's a lot of fun to mess around with. Sasha Gray versus chicken nuggets. Like this, these cursed images are, are great, right? Sasha Gray and Salma Hayek on a date. I forgot about this one, man. So good. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is one of my freaking favorites. Sasha Gray and Billy Harrington in the Navy ship. Oh, premium gotchi content. Where are the gotchis in chat? Uh, this is the stuff that's fun. That isn't bleak. Good stuff, you guys. The two-year jump in quality. Exactly. So this was like early June 2022. But then it became problematic. After all this fun meme stuff, my subreddit here started getting flooded with AI art. The only posts that were being posted onto my subreddit were just these random AI images of really girls and women that looked nothing like me. <laughs> yeah, so it became, it really became an issue on my subreddit where people were just posting exactly generic brunettes all over the subreddit. I actually warned the mods. I said, I see this becoming problematic. We have an art category, right? Like uh, an art flair on our subreddit. And what this was doing was really drowning the people that were submitting fun and cute fan art to the subreddit. And it was just taking over and I thought it wasn't fair. So at the beginning, yeah, I, I warned the mods that I thought it could become problematic. I wanted to make sure that it didn't, you know, that people were honest about what they were doing. So we started asking, is this AI or not? Is it? And then half the time the people wouldn't even reply. So it felt like people were just kind of flooding the subreddit who weren't even a true part of the community. All right, that's it, you guys. I just wanted to share my thoughts on this big announcement with OpenAI's Sora. And I wanted to also ask or say, tell me you've watched this entire VOD without telling me you watched the entire VOD. Have you used AI or machine learning technology? Because really that's what this is. AI tech is just a term adopted by the masses. Have you used it? Have you used it in a way where it's actually positively impacted your life? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Dale, 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 dilly, dale, dole. Dale, 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 dooly, do diddly daddly Flanders. <clears throat> Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this channel. <laughs> Finger guns. She's turned off.